everybody, my name is Sean, and this is Leah, and uh, we're doing our presentation on making biodiesel and microalgae. So microalgae is grown in water, and it needs to be harvested so that it doesn't extract any
methods you use, then the class will just keep. And if the research is added, then there's a trade-off because the compressor needs to be added. So there will be a different class of compressor, but then there will be higher rate of the cost. And this is our graph.
So some notable operating cost for this are maintenance costs for the observer and retention loss IVA. Maintenance costs is mainly because of the corrosive nature of the IVA, so the observer parts of it could break down. So it needs to be regularly cleaned and parts replaced. Loss of IVA is mainly because three main things. It can react with any sulfur oxides and nitric oxides in the feed stream, produce salts that don't break down in the stripper, and they're corrosive and can build up in the system so they you know. It can also undergo oxygen degradation to form small molecules and are mainly polymerization to form large molecular weight, which all three decrease efficiency and we need to add more energy to take up work. So you have a rotating and joint through filter, which filters up the water that way. Um, 
system of modeling it, you basically have a linear combination of equations. You have the bold part and then the filtering part. Um, the bold part you guys have seen before in class. Um, the filtering part you're looking at, it's kind of similar to a membrane. Basically, it's, like it's based on your delta P, your pressure, and your permeance of that filter. Um, in terms of costing it, you're looking at anywhere between $400,000 per unit. Um, I was doing a plant with, with 140000 times per year, so basically even at the maximum size that the uh, supplier would give you, it's not enough. So I looked at um, costing out eight individual ones to meet that um, required production. Um, this is per <coughs> one. You're looking at $400,000 per unit. Um, you're looking at 25% for a motor to drive the screw. You're looking at 10 to 50% for maintenance and installation. Um, in terms of operating costs, the main operating cost is your energy consumption, uh, which is $13,000, so our maintenance course is $13,000. Um, so for the total of the eight units, we're looking at around four and a quarter million dollars um, to put it in, and then another $400,000 a year to run it off. And then Harry is up the best to do Also, by 
better at dewatering the product than other filtration methods. So the dropping force is based on the density difference of ASA in the solution, and it's accelerated by the high angular momentum created in the unit. Uh, it's driven by a vertically mounted uh, rotating axis. This causes the liquid to flow up through the disc to gradually inward, and the solids uh, to slide outwards and then hang upon the wall hole for their continuously discharge. Uh, the design was based on an operating demand of two and a half billion pounds per year. It is actually produced by the Bayer Manufacturing Plant in Germany. And uh, using a tablet concentration of 325 milligrams of ASA, I was able to optimally design a centrifuge with 50 discs, an inner and outer radius of 79 and 84 centimeters respectively. And a disc angle of 50 degrees was used in an operating speed of about 60 RPMs or about 5 Gs was also utilized. Um, the capital costs were estimated, so first I used the those correlations and it resulted in a unit cost of about $64,000 and I verified this by going online and searching for other pages with similar properties that I designed and it resulted in about forty dollars to $60,000 per unit, so it coincides with what I calculated above. Uh, the electrical considerations, uh, based on a motor demand of 18 and a half kilowatts using the Ontario electrical price of 9 cents per kilowatt hour and operating schedule of 12 hours per day, five days a week, I was able to calculate uh, about a $5,000 operating cost per year. And the raw material is also considered, so I figured out that using the current, uh, current market price of toluene, salicylic acid, and acetic anhydride, which are the main ingredients in the liquor, uh, the following is calculated. Uh, this number, $3 million, is based on 453 batches a year, which is again from the production demand. And um, so we're looking at about $3 million per year just in the first year for starting up this process. Uh, two references I provided. The first is a book by Dr. Roger Gauthier McMaster. It provides a very good in depth look at the design calculations and operating principles behind the disc pool. And the second one is an online uh, review article for easy access. Uh, again, it provides a review of disc pools with continuous and intermittent also discharges, as well as more complex designs. There's no big walls. Absorbers are playing the cost you in the area of $1 million. 
And the reason it costs that much is because we need to have two. So like you saw on that previous slide, we actually need to have two absorbers. So while one is producing and absorbing the gas, the other one is regenerating and cooling down. So the way that Air Liquide does this in Hamilton is they use about a two hour operation cycle. And if you follow this calculation on the board here for steam, um, that is the amount of steam, uh, weight of steam for uh, zeolite that we need to be able to achieve the right uh, regeneration, uh, multiplied by how much zeolite we have with a two hour operating cycle operating 365 days a year. And uh, I pulled this cost from one of the references in this class and for and the, uh, the turkey books for the process industry. So that's a really simple calculation that you can do. And I would really encourage everyone to check out our references, particularly this video from Air Liquide at the bottom. Uh, it's not a reference that we actually use, it's not a formal literature reference, but it's a flash video on how the whole process works. So it's, uh, it's actually probably more interesting than our slides. So check that out and you'll probably learn something. So thanks very much. Um, that's been packed with activated carbon 
Um, the mechanism through which this works is primarily through the physical absorption. Uh, essentially, the adsorbate enters the fixed bed and travels through the fixed bed and attaches onto the absorbent and the activated carbon. Um, it, atta it attaches to the interstitial spacing and the porosity in the actual pores of the carbon. Um, essentially, you can find there's two major models that are used to uh, model this movement and the overall use of the system. And typically, pressurized vessels are suggested to be used for absorption. However, it's not necessary depending on what sort of inlet water characteristics you're using. Uh, now, the good thing about using activated carbon in a pressurized vessel is the extremely low cost. Essentially, there's almost, in retrospect to how expensive it is to treat water, um, 27 cents per 3.8 liters of activated carbon is basically nil. And the reason why you don't actually end up needing to consider the regeneration cost of activated carbon is essentially because of the latest research that's come out with the use of fixed bed absorbers um, with activated carbon. Um, it actually works to the advantage of um, in treatment to not regenerate the carbon because the actual biofilm that grows on your activated carbon starts acting, um, starts helping with the treatment process. Uh, also, there, the actual production and process in using a fixed absorber is actually pretty critical because all the variation that you might encounter in treatment water has actually been um, bounced out and clarified in the previous secondary treatment where you used to digest your hair. Um, if you want any more information, those are some pretty good books that I found in the library. They have some worked out examples using the Langmuir and Cradle Link model, which we uh, learned about in class, as well as uh, some more worked out examples for the more complex models that are used to help describe um, use of a fixed bed absorber with changing in the concentration. Health 
the quality reasons as well. And so for a labor, there has to be a person around to set the specifications to the right amount. So depending on what um, concentration of fat that you need in the skim milk, skim milk and uh, the cream uh, the specifications such as uh, the RPMs or um, yeah, so the RPMs would be changed accordingly. And you can find uh, one of the books that we use has a whole lot on the cheese production process and a great chapter on this whole centrifuges as well. And the other reference um, for an alternative way of creaming your milk before cheese, um, before using it for cheese uh, is membrane mi uh, microfiltration. And so there's another reference there for your purpose. And the second reference shows the difference between how the size of your fat globules affects the texture of the cheese.